G'day guys, Clevo King here. We're finally at the tail end of this build here. What we're doing today is the valve spring swap. Make sure you check out the other videos for everything else that we've done on this engine. Alrighty, so what I want to show you is these two ways that, there, that you can do this guys. There's a traditional cheap way where you can grab one of these things for 15 to 20 bucks and you can do it overhead. You can wind this cylinder over to top dead and wedge some nylon rope. Now the reason nylon's good is if any of these little frayed bits come off it just burns and it doesn't damage the cylinder. You stuff it in, coil it up around under the valve so that they can't really move. And um, then you grab one of these, you center it out, you make sure that it's in the middle, higher and lower, click it on as side as you can and you can compress the valve spring quite easily winding down like this. And the other way, little tip that we've done guys, is we cut some rubber hose and we wedge it on the end here. Something my brother actually came up with a while ago when we were doing some triple valve springs on one of his race engines. With these we leave on that. That's an awesome little hack guys. <laughs> Pretty much impossible. There's another little tip we've got, I'll put in another video when we're doing double valve springs, but this is just singles. Something that's important, what you need to know guys, is the valve spring installed height. I know I've done a lot of engines, I've already checked it all out here. But you want to make sure that you're putting these in with the right install height pressure regarding your retainer and your valve collets. collets. They'll sit at a certain height and you want to test when they're installed by measuring. If you come and have a bit of a look here, look there's a fancy tool you can buy but a lot of guys won't have it. You can get to the edge of the ledge on a couple of them that are flat like for example there or over here on this one on the side here and you can put the edge the tip of a set of verniers and you can run one one tip down uninterrupted to there and you can get the other tip to the to the bottom of this fulcrum make sure it's in a perfectly straight line in, in regards to the valve and you can work out Look, that's 1.782. So, that's the old setup, up guys, so that doesn't matter. So check check where you're at. Now, another little tip, if you're going to be going from a spring that's quite thin to quite heavy, they've got a different OD and a different ID, internal diameter, meaning what was sort of to locate the spring around the base of the head here, and a different external which is where the retainer is going to grab the valve so just have a look at everything that you're going to use is going to be interchangeable generally if you're going to a double valve spring you swap everything you're going to need a tool steel retainer different locks different collars what we've got here today is going to be fine guys all right guys so um there's two ways you can go about it you can use one of these which is sort of 15 to 20 bucks or you can have a bit of a look around and you can buy, don't ever buy anything Pro Comp, but these are actually from Pro Comp Roller Rocker set that I got. So I pinch these and what I do is I wind them into the pedestal so that you're going from the uh, 516, I think it is, start on the bottom to 716 on the top. And you get one of these tools guys now this tool here is an overhead stud mount valve spring compressor this side here has 3 8 for small block chevys windsors early winter things like that and on the bottom here is 716 so you could actually come and well i'm not on the right cylinder but what i'll i'll show you is one with this in a minute guys now what i wanted to explain before we move on to the next scene and i actually start to use that tool there is there's a few things to check while your springs are off have a look at the condition of these seals they're only cheap and if you've got a full gasket set and you're doing other work it's a good good investment just to change them then there's two ways you can go when you get your new valve springs after you measure your installed height as i showed with the verniers you can either get collets that are at a different height 50 thou higher or lower if you have a look here these are the original ones and these are some aftermarket ones i've got here that sit a bit higher so that's one way to go or the other way guys is to back up the bottom of the spring seat with a shim i've got a feeling with my measurements that i've taken that we're going to get away with just using the aftermarket collets here guys so 
Sorry guys, I had to cut that there. The neighbours started carrying on a bit. I live in a bit of a bad neighbourhood. So, it's kind of funny that we're getting away with doing this here. You should see some of the characters that walk past daily, but... This is the next scene, guys. We've got the cheap tool. We've got our new spring, which matches the camshaft. It's very important when you're doing a camshaft swap, if you're going to anything performance, that you change the springs out, or you're not going to get any better performance gains with the camshaft. The other thing is to match the lifters to the camshaft type. A few of my mates, believe it or not, as ridiculous as this will sound, will have put solid lifters on the hydraulic cam. The ramps are different, and it's just the, the night riding, everything's different. The oiling, it doesn't work. Um, so what we've got here is the Crane Blue Racer Springs with a stripe. Now we've worked out our installed heights. I'm not going to tell you the specs of these because I've checked them. Just make sure you know what you're working with if you're changing them and just double check and make sure that your retainers will be suitable for the spring. Gee, the neighbors are making a lot of noise today, but all right. What we'll do now, guys, is we'll load this up in this compressor. So we open the two feet up like this. Make sure that your retainer is on. Oh, something I didn't mention, guys. It's not super important, but the um, valve springs, if you want to have a think of here, you can see When you get them out of a box, the inner will move up and down, but there's a top and a bottom. If you have a look, they'll, they'll put the inner spring slightly higher at the bottom so that it doesn't interfere with the single seat because a lot of heads will have a single and if you put the dampener in that will actually be compressed in between the bottom of the retainer and the top of this valve spring seat here so flip them over I went through the whole box there when we got them and I've got the tops to the top and the bottom to the bottom so we'll grab the uh, retainer that I had here and put it in the top of this one we get our little tool here guys Chuck it in there like that centered and then what you want to do here is spin these hooks around to get it to the lowest part of the spring where it doesn't interfere with the internal so oh you're just no. on the other here comes the copyright wow <laughs> everything's Wait, against me in this video this? luckily this is the second last video of the series here guys it's, it's the game bro you gotta have a beautiful laugh for this okay, right. some of the tunes the neighbors some pull out are classic some of our neighbours are classics. All some, right. of our, some of our characters are neighbours. <laughs> some of our neighbours are characters. Guys, I'm getting a little bit jumbled. The, the funny thing is when you just get into some of these old songs and it like stops and cuts out, you're like, man, just just consistently don't play music. Or play. You know, if you're embarrassed to finish the song, don't start the song. There we go. Right. See you guys? All right, guys. So what you do here, get it to the lowest point that you can because you don't want to <laughs> squash the spring by having... The, grabbing the spring higher than you need to and overcompensating so you get it down nice and low where you're not going to interfere so a bit of clearance on the bottom I'm going to do a couple with this tool guys and then we're going to swap over to the easy tool and I'll show you the way that I do them okay so we're probably just about right there we've got a couple of collets over here look it does need to wear glasses when you do this sort of a thing but we'll just quickly chuck this one back on here so this is the exhaust, Oop, not quite low enough. Okay. Now guys, the trick is, glad that music stopped for a second, get the one collet in where there's heaps of access like on this side and then I spin it around the back to where there's no room that might be a bit hard sometimes you've got to spin the whole tool around push the valve spring over now tied on that collet since it's low so that you can try and get just enough clearance to get this side in see I did a little cheeky pick the valve up there guys and then when you get it sided like that pick the whole tool up right so that you're locked on the now slowly release the spring back down and you can turn it around and by hand guide it exactly on that valve spring seat where you want it to be this is a little stepper a lot of my mates miss when they do heads and i go and help them break in the cam and we undo the rocker covers and i'll have a bit of a look guys and if i spot that the um 
Sorry guys, just one second. Now spot that the valve spring, see this this one, because I got stuck then just moved off its seat. So what you want to do is you want to get at the base of a wooden rubber mallet handle and just pop it. Did you hear that clip in place guys? Yes, that's it. Okay, so that's one spring done. Oh wow. That feels great. Oh, that's got the spring that's perfect. We've got the new, <laughs> oh, yeah. the new hardened retainers. <laughs> Picked up a bit of power. Sorry, we've got new hardened collets there, guys, but we're using the old retainers because they're in spec and they worked fine. Okay, so that one's good. What we can do at this stage, switch this back on, zero her out. We can quickly get her around and we'll have a bit of a sneaky where we can reach that base of that on top of this. Yeah, straight parallel to the valve. Okay, so that bottom's getting interfered with there. That's not a very good angle. I think it was the other set of calipers, bro. This is like the bigger yeah. set. The other set of calipers I broke the other day, bro. A lot easier to get in here to get this. You can actually. So there you go, guys. You want to get it parallel on both planes. See there, parallel on both planes. What are we getting? Things probably turned off. Eh? <laughs> What's it 1. doing? 1.824. We wanted 1.850, but I like to over overpack the springs just a little bit so we can turn it a bit higher up here. Yeah. So what were we at there? Um, 1.824 and we're meant to be at 1.850 so I've got that 25 thou tighter than it should be. Look I haven't done got the maths right now on, on hand it'll be about probably 8 to 10 pounds heavier on the seat which is perfect because valve springs wear in so fast guys if you can pack them a little bit tighter it's a great little thing now a lot of guys will uh, say we will install this and we are at that's nice 1.8 uh, 1.8 inches but we wanted 1.85 then you can get the 50 thou different height like what i had out as an example before to, to push it down further or you can get 50 thou higher but you've got to be careful if you go 50 thou higher and you're running a stamped steel rocker arm the tip of the retainer is going to interfere with the valve rocker ratio you can get away with roller rockers and stuff because you know they've got the roller tip and it hangs at the lowest point and there'll be just enough clearance if you have to go higher but uh, just watch your clearance if you're going to use a stock steel rocker arm another little tip if you're putting a camshaft in and you're going bigger than 540 lift swap over to roller rockers straight away don't risk it there's a few guys that have to say that they're getting away with it and that on engines but uh, the pressure that's on the rocker arm there's no point putting in a performance camshaft to lifters and a good push rod and a good valve spring and then running a crap steel stamped rocker arm that's going to be the width the next week of slink so that's my little tip. This cam's actually on the safe side. I'm not sure whether we'll fit a set of rockers. I do have a set inside we can probably bolt on. All right, guys, so that's it. Check your installed height. This one's beautiful. We've overpacked it a bit. Now look, that's not exactly 100% accurate to try and measure off the seat back up to the top, but you know, you, you, use, buddy, use yeah. your mind's eye. There is a fancy tool you can get, which I'm going to show when I'm setting up some performance heads later on. This is a roadkill style shit on the driveway, guys. It is Enjoy. what it is, stock, you know. We'll keep the camera rolling and I'm just going to rip in now. What it's we'll going to be do, fun, guys. This is sick. What we'll do is slap this one back in. See, the rope's under there, but it's not quite enough. So I'll show you the tip for that. Watch this. We'll do this one the hard way too. Alright, you will, uh, they're the good ones. Nope, they're those ones that are a bit off, so I'll just secure this one for there. Okay. Top and bottom of the spring, guys. See the bottom's inset? See the top's right there? Check your retainers aren't cracked, worn, nothing going on crazy like that. Bit of dirt inside that one, we'll get that out. Right, so that goes in there. 
going to do these two springs the hard way. I normally don't use this tool anymore, guys, so something different for you. Okay, so we'll center that out. There and there. Click that in, click that in. Just move this around as well as we can get it. So guys, when I'm doing this now, you're not always going to have optimum ample room to get in when you're removing the old spring, but they're generally going to be pretty weak, so you're not really going to have to fight the old spring too much to get it out. But with the new spring, take your time with this tool. When you get it here as low as you can in the coil, don't go close where you're touching like that, or you'll have the issue that I had there where I couldn't really pull it out, and be mindful because the spring as you do it up will compress off to one side of it so I moved it to get the right place to get the collar in and as I was going down I was guiding this to the seat but I wasn't paying attention to getting these stuck in between the, the back edges of a couple of valves which isn't a big deal you can move it out of the way but you know right it's a bit of a pro tip guys so that's awesome have a good look centered everything's clipped on we're down as low as we will go so you see you back it out there just move it back a little bit so you've got that clearance Right, now I don't want to get these collets out of my hand so I can really reef this one up because I kind of messed that last one up. It's fun working on engines guys, and you don't need the most fancy of tools to do shit like this. This is the crap one that I don't really like, but I'll, uh, I'll get the job done. You will see. Okay, so we'll stick that down. Now this is going to give me a bit of trouble, what you can do sometimes with this is stick a zip tie around to you guys. You can like cut it back out later. And then you can just pull it out With after. a sandy knife. But I'm going to just get it in like that. See that? With my back nail I'm holding it up. There's not a lot of pressure on it. The rope's there so it's not going to drop completely into the cylinder. If you know what, I'm, what I mean. Okay. I'm going to line this up. You really should have glasses on at this stage guys. I'm going to get this colored right down into this seat here. It's catching on the groove there somewhere. Might have to. Oh. I, don't, I don't mind doing these single grooves. They just, for me, they fall in. But I always struggle with these old multi-groove. Oh, guys, look at that. She's getting a bit... There's a bit of an extra the element there battling holding the valve up. Because the valve's dropping. Yeah. So I'll hold that there. You get a groove. There's plenty of groove. And just get this into the right spot there like that yep, there you go guys that. spin that around yep now your fingers holding it all up and that back clip in now just pop the hope you get that shot guys that's beautiful look at that see that guys look they're that. both in now the next tip is to pull the retainer up onto the collet so that they don't flick out if something goes wrong if this was to shoot off now guys that spring's going to go for pull down to the seat but you're not going to lose your collets because you're holding a steady upwards pressure. Now as I did before, this one's got heaps of room. You're not really going to snag anything, but there's a couple of little bits that you can get caught on. So we'll unwind it slowly. Now this other way that I'm going to show you guys is the best way to undo them, but sometimes I don't mind actually installing them like this because you can guide it down and get the spring exactly on its seat like this. Yeah, I found with the, with the lever style tool. It's very less, important, the springs access. won't last very long if you don't check that they're right on their seat where they're meant to be, guys, when they're installed. So right there like that. That's it, guys. And then we'll make sure that they're all clipped in. Yep. How's that pressure? Pretty good. Hopefully. That's it, that's, that's the ticket. It's a tiny little pop there guys, just locks the retainer, which we're using a, a hardened steel retainer now on here, multi-groove, because the old ones, if you go a close look here, see that little dingle guys? That's why I swapped them. Good swap, And to get the heights spot on too. So there are old four there, bit of shit. Right, so that's one cylinder done. Awesome bro, gee that's sick. Ready to go. Alrighty. That's nice. I love them sprung a little bit tighter, bro. Okay, oh, beautiful. That's good. Look, if you're unsure of some of this stuff that I'm running through in the video here, guys, cylinder head shops charge n n nothing if you can get the heads off and take them in to do this quick swap around, and they can swap seals. If you're going from a single to a double, you're going to have to remove the heads from the engine to get the seat machined. 
There is a dodgy way around it. I've seen people do where they'll stack up two or three of these to get past the spring seat pedestal. And then you can run, you know, a double spring with a Viton seal without machining the bottom of the seats, guys. But you're restricted to very small camshaft like duration. So you've got a double, but you're not beginning to use the double, so I wouldn't do it. And the other thing is you're compressing a new spring so tight you're making your on the seat pressures way higher than they're meant to be. And you're getting closer and closer to coil bind. Coil bind is something I'll talk a bit more about later, but for now we're going to um, rip the rope out of these cylinder like that. <whistles> Stick it here. Now we're done with this, so what we're going to do is wind it around and get the next cylinder up to top dead and we'll just work systematically from one side forward to the back. So have a bit of a look there straight away at the difference. See the actual clearance in between the bind of the springs is a lot more guys for the increased lift of the new camshaft. Plus it's a heavier wire gauge and it's got the internal dampener. So they're just a single spring with a dampener heavy duty exactly to suit this cam and I've installed them just a little bit tighter than they need to be so it's going to be Mickey. Alright, we'll get oh, back to what I was saying so before. Nice bro, that's bad. Just a little bit more. It's not a good idea oh, to do head stuff at home if you're not competent because if something goes wrong here you can like destroy an engine really easily but if you're following easily and you understand keeping up all right guys see that that came out really easy and that's the hard way to do it there's the other way is we're probably going to just use the rope on all of these if we're lucky another tip with the rope is if you have it up the top and you try and put the rope in you're not going to get much rope in it pays to feed the rope in and then to wind it up to the top but you don't want to kind of wedge the rope too tight either so you might have to spin the engine back the other way to get it out Alrighty. so what we're going to do now is um move along another thing is the way the timing works if we skip to 90 degrees on the crank we could go straight to cylinder three from one to three but we're just going to do two so i'll we'll put our screwdriver in the bore we'll start spinning it around a few when this starts coming up which is now hang on i'll try it Okay, so that's coming up, so I should take it down a bit to about there and we'll stuff the rope in. And we'll bring it up to the top. Where do I put that rope in? That over here. Okay, so it's here. The rope, burn the end of the rope with a lighter so you're not dropping stuff in the engine. Of course, that's a pretty obvious one there, guys. You want to stuff the rope in when it gets caught, give it a little bit of a turn, keep a nice handle on it like that. Okay, so we'll wind it back to where we were at top dead, which was there out there make sure that that's not like cord okay come up here you guys let's have a look at this this is the step stud we talked about before that we're screwing in to the head this is the stud mount valve spring compressor that screws straight onto the top of a 716 stud so if you've got AFD heads 4V heads solid cam some sort of a performance aftermarket camshaft or aftermarket cylinder heads you're going to have this style of setup this is the pole here oh, yeah. and now we'll get back to where we were <coughs> all right guys so we've sc screwed this on let's rope in the cylinder we're at top dead we're going from one to two we've done these two so this is I think this is a Proform overhead stud mount valve spring compressor. It's only about 120 bucks. Awesome, it does Windsor and Clevo 3, 8, and 7, 16 studs. Alright, guys, we've done those first two cylinders. Now we're on cylinder three. So you get your rope here, you stick it down into the cylinder quite a bit so that it goes all the way around to get trapped under both valves. And then we'll wind this around now. If a fine screwdriver in the side of the rope to figure out where we're going to be back in here. Top dead here. Okay, so it's coming up. And there we go, it's squashing on the rope. Okay, now we're going to get onto these two here. So we'll show you with this overhead valve spring compressor one, and then we'll use the other tool on the other one. So, back the tool right out. Clip it in as low as we can, which is right about 
right about there. Keep it centered. Get that up nice and level, guys. Everything nice and level. Okay, sometimes when you start getting them a bit loose like this, it pays to give them a bit of a, a bit of a slap before you put too much pressure on the tool like this and start compressing it because you want to crack the varnish loose that's in that in that uh, so you want to bust it, snap it like that. Okay, so the valve's up. I'm gonna wind this right down now. Put a turn on it. Get it fully compressed. We'll grab a strong magnet here, guys. It will come in, and we will give it a bit of a wiggle because they're gonna be greasy. There's one collet. The other one's on my finger there. I'm just gonna guide it around. Guide it around. There we go guys. Okay, so that's one spring off. Get the valve out like this. And just so we don't have any issues, we'll quickly get in here and we'll just wipe this valve stem seat. Now notice that we've pulled the seal off, so there's a seal stuck in here, we'll have to make sure it goes back on. It's a good time, these seals are all in good condition, but if the seals were sad, or broken or dried out, you would swap them around now. So that back on guys, don't miss that. Old spring aside, give the hands a quick wipe, grab one of these new springs, check we've got it the right way, yep. Okay. Now, two locks, valve spring compressor. Now, I like to try and get this down as low as you can without a binding on the bottom so you go to where it runs out back it up just a bit like that start this bit up slowly looking that you're in the middle of the collar in the middle of the spring get that going pace to have your hands empty but we want to we want to be keeping track of what collars are coming off and going back on too so we've done one two three four and we're on number five so we've got one two three four Five. Sweet. There are two good ones. Compress this really quickly. Nice and gentle back over that over that setup there. I don't think that's enough compression. I'm keeping a steady sideways pressure on that with my hand just so that it doesn't flick out because there's a lot of pressure on that spring to be compressed. The last thing you want to do is the whole lot to jump out and to lose one of these collets in the engine or on the ground. Okay, you want to get the loose side which is there why is it getting caught on that inner edge there yeah, you go <laughs> it was so easy but it was like just resisting yeah so that side's in there first now this one I get it right into there right into there guys and move the slack over this way I think I've got enough Compression on there, so grab that little guy. Trying to run away, are ya? We're going in here. Don't you know where your hand is? You practice with these guys, and then when you're like working with like single groove, you're like, wow, it just falls into place. <laughs> but yeah, these original ones are a little bit. Tricky. You've got pretty much full compression there. There we go. Okay. As hard as it is, it's easy. At the same time, you just got to. You've got to right. look at the valve spring's going to flop one way or the other. You want to find that big opening, and you want to stick the first one in there. But then you want to try and wedge the first one back around the back to where the spring's not compressed. And wobble it around, wobble it around. Okay, so that's in. That's on. Now what we've got to do here is just 
lightly move this seat back onto its seat so it's in the right spot. Like that. Did you hear that, guys? Beautiful. Okay, rubber mallet. Give that a clip, get it there locked in. Located. That's the ticket. Okay, so they're all locked in. Let's quickly move over to this one. Now, this one we're going to do a different way, guys. I'm going to grab this valve spring compressor. Convert. Uh, sorry, this is. We're going <laughs> to. We're going to grab this roller rocker conversion stud that goes into a sock head. Get rid of these old comments over here so they don't mess us up. Okay, what we're going to do now, guys, is screw that down as far as it goes. We'll grab this tool here, which is a stud mount overhead valve spring compressor. The brand of this one is Proform, but there's a few brands that make them. We'll screw it down like this. This is the way that I like to do these. Don't bottom it out on the stud or you might have an issue getting the stud back out of there later on. Put the big handle on and we'll come around here. And we will... Okay, so this... This one just makes it such a quick job. Did you see that, guys? Old spring out. Those little retainers over the back here. Pretty sure they're two new good ones. We'll grab one of our springs, wipe the bottom of this retainer, click it into the head the right way. We'll come and wipe this seat here quickly, get the shit off of there. Okay, we'll get our valve spring, we'll put it back over the valve there like that. Spin this tool back 180. Now this time you want to push the valve back towards the inside of the engine because if you look that angle's not exactly right. These are multi-fit for Chevy and you don't want the the collar to grab the multi-groove of the valve. And you won't be able to get the retainer back in. So one there guys. One here. Hold them in place gently, and job done. So that's that's the easy way to do it, guys. Now I do have a fancy air stop uh, that I plug into the cylinders and into my air compressor, but uh, the rope works so good. The nylon rope, guys. If you stuff enough in, see it did move a little bit there. The valve up and down. It's not going to hold, but if you've got a good compressor that can just squash the shit out of the spring. You have no issues. Alrighty, so that was pretty quick. Now we'll have to get the spring back on its seat there, so we'll just, you know, the last step now, guys, is get this back on its meant to get over there. Like that. Lock that in, click that in. Alright, guys, so those two are done. The seal's still in place. Everything looks good. Just double checking before we move along. That's it, guys. Check it out, guys. It's official Clevo King Bills. That's the ticket.